What is fire? The first bit of good news is that combustible materials, those capable of burning, which is pretty much everything given the right conditions, rarely burst into flames spontaneously. If they did, it's unlikely that our planet would have evolved much further than looking like the bottom of Jeremy Clarkson's ashtray. To create fire, you need three things. Some fuel, an oxidizing agent, normally the oxygen in the air, and enough heat to raise the fuel to what's known as its ignition point, which is where it decomposes into a burnable mixture. Let's assume I have a stick and a match. To set the stick on fire, I will need to get it to this ignition point, which is around 150 degrees Celsius for wood. I do this by holding the match under the stick. The burning match creates the heat, and once the wood in the stick has reached its ignition temperature, it starts to decompose into chemically volatile gases and what we know as charcoal. These volatile gases react with the oxygen in the atmosphere. Their compound molecules break down and recombine with the oxygen to form water, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, all sorts of other things. This process creates heat. It's exothermic, as your chemistry teacher would say. And this starts a sort of chain reaction, bringing any other fuel in the vicinity, i.e. the rest of the stick, up to the ignition temperature. Eventually, your fingers as well. The flame you see is a mixture of volatile gases and solids, and it can produce either visible or invisible light. The frequency spectrum is such that methanol, for example, burns with an invisible flame. But if you set fire to something organic, like a tree or your fingers, then thanks to the incandescent soot, it produces that orangey-yellow glow that we would call fire. And because this incandescence increases with temperature, we can use the color of flames to give us a rough, but actually quite precise, guide to the temperature of the flames. So, a barely visible red flame is around 525 degrees Celsius. An orange flame is more like 1200 degrees Celsius. And a very intense white flame is 1500 degrees or more. Fire is really just a particularly vigorous oxidation process, one that you can understand even if you weren't paying attention at school in chemistry, as indeed I wasn't. But let's take the burning of methane, or natural gas. On one side of the equation, you have methane and oxygen. And then on the other side, after a little bit of reorganization, you have carbon dioxide and water, or, because this is very hot, steam. Gravity also has a role to play here. Because flames are hotter than the air around them and therefore less dense, they will tend to travel upwards to an area of lower pressure. And that's why flames have their distinctive pointy shape. If you were to, and I can't stress enough that this is an idiotic idea, if you were to light a fire inside a zero gravity spacecraft, you would find that the flames wouldn't travel upwards. They would form into a sphere. But the good news is, because it doesn't move out of the way by convection, the fire would eventually be suffocated by its own carbon dioxide. To put out a fire, you simply need to remove one of those three conditions, the fuel, the heat, or the oxygen. That is why you can blow out a candle. Yes, by blowing on it, you're giving it more air, but you're removing the heat, so it goes out. And that is why the best way to put out a chip pan fire is with one of those natty silver blankets. You put that over the top and it takes away the air. But when you moved house, you lost it. So now you have no house at all.